Before I get started in this video, I want to reiterate something that I had mentioned in the very first video in this series, which bears repeating. I've had a number of people tell me that they're really enjoying the series, but as they don't keep lace monitors, they don't think it's relevant to them. So the point I want to repeat is this. When it comes to reproduction, monitors are fairly conservative as a group, from the very small to the very large, and don't very much except in the tiny details. What that means is that although most of the photographs and videos I've been showing in this series have featured lace monitors, and this particular video will probably be the worst at that as it features nothing but lace monitors, the information in this video series can be applied to all monitors. I'll try to mention the differences in the details where they are applicable, but for the most part the behaviors I describe in this series are pretty consistent across the monitor family. With that said, let's learn about ovulation. In the previous video we looked at mating behavior in monitors. In this video, we'll be looking at the next stage of the reproductive process, which is ovulation. This is probably going to end up being the shortest video in this series, yet it is one of the most important for a number of reasons, which I'll cover later. In episode 4, which is on the start of the reproductive cycle, I emphasize the importance of not confusing vitellogenesis, or cycling, with ovulation. So perhaps I should start with a brief biology lesson explaining what ovulation is and why it's such an important part of the monitor breeding process before explaining how to recognize when it is occurring. That is, the external physical signs that indicate a female monitor is ovulating. You may recall from episode 4 that during vitellogenesis, several of the female's egg cells, or ova, develop yolk and enlarge. And you may also recall from episode 5 that it is during vitellogenesis that the female becomes receptive to the male so they begin mating. The male sperm travel up the oviducts, and collect at the mouths of the oviducts. What happens during ovulation is that the yolked up ova are released from the ovaries and then enter the oviducts where they are fertilized by the sperm, which has been waiting at the mouths of the oviducts since mating. So why is this an important reproductive stage to understand? recognize and detect in a female monitor. For starters, ovulation signals the end of mating. Usually a pair will have stopped mating a fair while before ovulation occurs, but sometimes it will continue right up to the point at which the female ovulates. However, once the female ovulates, mating usually comes to a complete halt. Even if there is the odd mating a day or two after ovulation, which is rare, it is likely to be fruitless. What this means from a husbandry point of view is that if you want to separate your monitor pair after mating, ovulation is a good point at which to remove the male. In other words, in the same way that vitellogenesis is the point at which you put your pair together, ovulation is the point at which you separate them. Vitellogenesis and ovulation are bookends to the mating process. Secondly, ovulation is the point of no return for egg laying. What I mean by this is that once the female is ovulated, she is committed to laying eggs. Prior to ovulating, if conditions aren't quite right for nesting, it is possible for a female to resorb the eggs. Once she has ovulated, she is no longer able to resorb them and must lay them or she'll get into trouble. So if you weren't paying attention in episode 3 and haven't set up your nesting conditions properly, the female can retain the eggs and become egg-bound. Thirdly, Ovulation is the most consistent predictor of when the female will lay. For a large monitor like the lace monitor, the timing between first mating and egg laying is around 30 days. But this can vary. I've seen female lace monitors and parentes lay as little as 21 to 23 days after mating. What doesn't change, though, is the timing between ovulation and egg laying. In lace monitors, this is a predictable 15 to 16 days under controlled conditions indoors. It is predictable enough that on a few occasions I've set up a time-lapse camera to record egg laying 
because I knew the female would be laying that day, but I had to leave for work. Of course, this period will be shorter in smaller species of monitor and may even vary across larger species. So as I mentioned in the very first video in this series, it's good to keep detailed records of everything you see so that you can pick up the patterns with your particular monitors and then be able to predict when they will lay based on when you see them ovulate. So now that I've impressed on you the importance of ovulation, what are the external signs that a female monitor is ovulating? The first thing you'll notice is the female resting in really bizarre poses. I suspect it is painful for the female to rest her abdomen on any surface when she is ovulating because the typical ovulation posture consists of an arched back with as little of her abdomen touching as possible. Here are two photographs of the same female resting in the same part of the enclosure on different days. In the first photograph, you can see the females resting normally, with her belly flattened out. The second photograph was taken in the same week, but during ovulation. You can see how the female's back is arched, and she appears to be trying her hardest to keep her abdomen off the mockrock. In this next image, she's barely touching her abdomen to the surface, if it's touching at all. At first glance, it looks like she was about to lie down, but she'd actually held this posture for quite some time and had even gone to sleep while sitting like this. In top-down views, even though the arched back and raised belly aren't as obvious, it is still quite clear that the female's posture is distorted. Another characteristic is that, at the risk of being anthropomorphic, the female looks miserable. The first time I saw this behavior many years ago, I thought the female was unwell, but she looked as though she was in pain, often closing her eyes, as in this photograph. It was only after I had observed it on a number of separate occasions that I recognized the pattern, as it always happened 15 to 16 days before egg laying. Another characteristic is that the female's abdomen looks swollen and taut, often with little or no lateral fold visible. Here's another pair of before and after photographs. Here's the female resting normally. Note her nearly flattened back. And here she's ovulating. Note her arched back. To demonstrate how much she is arching her back and how swollen her body is, I'm going to draw a line through the skin patterns on the side of her body while resting normally. And then run a line through those same skin patterns in the second photograph. Here's another pair of photographs, taken only a day apart. The female happened to rest in almost exactly the same position during and after ovulation, so we can do a direct comparison. Here she is after ovulation, and here she is during ovulation. You can see the arched back. And if I again draw a line through the patterns on her sides for a direct comparison, you can see that she is trying to reduce the pressure on the part of her abdomen touching the surface of the mockrock. If you look at the dates of these photographs, it tells you something else about ovulation, and that is that it only lasts for a day or so. Sometimes it all happens in half a day, so if you're away at work during the day, it's really easy to completely miss it, although often the female will already start to look a little bit uncomfortable first thing in the morning. As I'd mentioned earlier, in some of these photographs, it looks as though I'd caught the female just as she was about to lie down, but if we look at videos of females ovulating, you'll notice that they don't look much different. The only difference between these videos and the still images I showed earlier is that if you look closely, you can see the female breathing or closing her eyes. When the ovulating female does move around, she moves quite carefully, again giving the impression that it is painful for her to bump her abdomen on anything. In this video of an ovulating female climbing up to bask, 
She puts her head down to rest, but she tries to keep her belly off the mock rock. Here are some more videos of ovulating females holding pretty still in uncomfortable poses. In most of these clips, the females are clearly propping themselves up, with their bellies barely touching the surface or not touching at all. Again, note the key characteristics of ovulation. The arched back, the swollen, taut abdomen, and the absence of lateral folds. As I said earlier, the female not only rests in very unrelaxing postures, but looks miserable. The other characteristic of ovulation is that every now and then the female will raise her abdomen up and contract her abdominal muscles. Here's the same behavior again. So now you should know what to look for when your female monitor is ovulating. Once the female is ovulated, she is officially gravid, and that is a topic of the next video in this series, the behavior of gravid monitors. If you found this video informative and want to be notified of the next video in the series, you know the routine please hit that subscribe button and make sure notifications are turned on. See you then.